Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel and we are here for our second episode on It Girl Business Tips 101. If you guys are new to this channel, welcome. This is a new series that I'm starting. If you guys are returning, then you already know your girl is always giving story times and beauty and fashion tips. But this series, you guys, is for my entrepreneurs, for my it girls who are looking to start a business who, or who has already started a business and is looking to grow your business past the dimension that it is right now. That is the journey that I'm on currently. And I just want to share with you guys all the ups and downs, highs and lows that I'm going through in order to become a successful entrepreneur. So the first topic we talked about on our last episode, we talked about the five key points, the imperative important five key points it takes in order to start a business. So after we went over all that good stuff, I know you guys are probably asking, okay, so I know how to start a business. All right, cool, key. Okay, but where the money coming from? Where's the money on? Okay, you guys, one of the hardest things that you're ever going to experience as an entrepreneur is how to create money, how to make money work for you, how to gain money to do one thing, to migrate money, move around money. Money, 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 money. Money is always going to be a very important aspect in whatever business venture that you decide to embark on so I don't know about y'all but the reason why I still work a nine to five is because I literally use my money that I earn to invest self-invest into my own business so I use my income to fund my dream in a sense so shop.dayharrisnyc.com is funded by a nine to five so with that being said today we're going to be talking about how to balance a nine to five and owning a business anyone who works a nine to five understands that it takes up your entire life okay especially if you're someone who's working 40 hours a week on salary your time is literally split in half with your employer um, I would say third because the government takes half of your check. So you're literally working a third of the time for yourself, a third of the time for the employer, a third of the time for the government. That is your week, right? Now, when you become an entrepreneur, you guys, it gets more malicious and more crazier than that. You're not only going to be working for all those people, you're now going to be working for your business, for your baby. The thing that you're trying to grow and blossom, you're going to have to pour into that too. So if you were giving your nine to five 100%, you're going to need to dial that back. You're going to need to bring it back, bring it back a little bit. And then you're going to have to roll that back in into your business now. You know what I mean? So this means that all the spare time that you thought that you had, <laughs> it's gone. You know, guys, time management is going to be extremely imperative when you decide to use your income from your nine to five to fund your new business venture. Starting a new business is literally a dream us entrepreneurs have in our minds that we now have the courage to go after, to chase and to pursue, right? But as the good saying and the old saying goes, you have to what? You have to spend money to make money. And that goes for any and everything that you're doing, especially anything that you want to be fruitful, you're going to have to pour into it in order for it to pour back into you, for you to get anything in return. So in business, you're always going to need capital. I spoke a little bit about capital in our last video. Please check that out if you missed it. Capital is extremely imperative in your business venture. Without capital, you literally can't do anything. You need some type of money to start any type of venture that you're going into. You're gonna need money for inventory, you're gonna need money for supplies, for labor, for licenses, for marketing costs. You're literally gonna need money to build what it is that you're trying to build before it's actually built. So now that we've already found the courage to start our business, now we need to find the funds, okay? We need the manyan. And that's when we have to awaken our financial geniuses um, I got that phrase from 
rich dad poor dad okay awaken your final geniuses and i really love that phrase awaken your final geniuses because our mind literally helps us solve problems so if our mind is going to help us solve a problem if we tell our mind hey i need money for this specific thing instead of telling your mind oh how am i gonna do this how am i gonna earn this money how am i gonna get this money how am i gonna make this happen you need to tell your mind hey this is what i want to do now i need to find ways on how to do it i need to find a way to generate this income in order to fund my goal that's what i need to do and that all takes a balance okay balance and strategy which i'm going to go over with you guys in this video the first thing you need to remember when working a nine to five and owning your own business a small business that you're starting out please remember that it's temporary and it's not forever through every step, remember that this is just a stepping stone. This is a bridge to get me from point A and point B. Until your business money, the money that you invested in your business, now your business is working for you and it's generating money for you. So now you're not going to need that 9 to 5 anymore. But we have to get there. We're not just going to take an elevator up there. we got to walk up the stairs. I'm sorry if your back hurts, but we're going to have to take the stairs. Okay? That's what we have to do. Okay? My back is aching right now. Okay? But I'm getting up there. Okay? Jesus walks so we can climb okay so when I say use your nine to five income to fund your business I'm not saying to take your entire check and pour it into your business that wouldn't be financially intelligent would it be no but of course it starts with saving so of course we have to save unfortunately we do have to save post tax which means we have to take the money that the government has already taxed and use that to begin our savings but that's the reason why we're trying to get out the rat race and we're trying to own our own business so that we can cut those corners and avoid paying the government for our hard work okay taking from your income to fund your business is definitely possible a little goes a long way me i started to save up for my business little at a time every check i take out a small percentage that is up to your discretion whatever it is that you can afford to take out and it's not even like I take out I kind of like take away something that I really don't need so I used to have a habit of smoking ganja a lot and it costs to smoke ganja but because I wanted to start my business I'm like hey I'm gonna have to sacrifice ganja to pour into my business if you're a person who likes to get your nails done every two weeks maybe you can get your nails done every once a month every month and you can cut back on that in order to fund your business sometimes we can cut on things that maybe doesn't serve as big as of a purpose that we think it does in order to pour into something else that means much more for us right but it's all about discipline you guys you have to discipline yourself in order to gain the things that you want now that we have that income set aside now we have to use it strategically to fund our business of course not many of us are gonna have thousands and thousands of dollars to now pour into a new business so managing that money and using it wisely and placing it in places that it needs to be is very important. This income is going to go towards things like your website, your inventory, your business license, your marketing and promotion, um, labor, paying employees, just everything that's going to be needed to run the business is going to be funded by this capital that you have now saved up to fund it. This income is in place to cover only in all of your business costs. So the question is not why I need the money. We know why we need the money to cover business costs. The question is, why do I need this nine to five, right? How or how can I work this nine to five and do this? A lot of people look at owning a business and working as something that is very difficult. And you guys, they're not lying. It is difficult. It is truly, truly difficult to balance both working for your employer and their dreams trying to generate your employer's dream and then going back home to try to build your own dream you're literally pouring into two different things simultaneously so it can be very draining for you if you do not know how to manage it correctly also remember having an income a in nine to five is not only important in monetization value where it's funding your business costs it's also important in credibility um, for example, if you want to go to the bank to take out a loan, financial institutions want to know that you have money 
in your possession they want to know your your monies and your savings your bank statements they need to understand that you can afford this loan to pay back this loan they want to look at credit scores etc so having a job keeps your money flowing um even if your business is not generating income right now at least you have money coming in of in inside of your account and not just outside of your account because lord knows i love to shop but i need to show that i have money coming in and it's steady money that i can depend on money that the bank can depend on to get their money back after they loaned you your money to own your business you see what i'm saying it's all a trifecta so having a nine to five is important for the business cost and is important for credibility when it comes to making financial decisions as far as loans etc etc right another benefit of working a nine to five is that you're an employee and being an employee for someone who already owns their business you get the inside scoop you guys you get to see exactly well not everything depending on what level you are in the company you get to see exactly how a company's operated because i know that was my experience i worked for many companies and from each and every company i've ever worked for no matter if i was at the lowest level or at mid level or at a high level i got to learn how to run a business all the things that i want to do and all the things that i do not desire to do i've learned from working at other companies so yes we may be working to build up someone else's dream for just a, a short time but you get to learn from that person too this person has already established their dream and they're growing now so what better experience is there to have than one that's up close and personal now that we've established why it's beneficial to work a nine to five and focusing on the pros because we all already know the cons of working and owning your business. I'm sure I don't have to list it in this video. I'm sure you guys can drop it in the comments. It's tiring, it's draining, blah, 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 la -dee -la -la. but we got to get past that hurdle, y'all. We got to get past it. Like a lot of things are going to tire and drain us and what are we going to do? Cry about it every time? We're just going to have to get past that. Now that you're ready mentally to start your side hustle and you're not letting anything stop you and especially not a nine to five you're going to use that nine to five to your advantage i'm going to give you guys some steps that you can take to get you on the right track in the right direction to starting your own business one thing that's very important to me and it better be important to y'all and it's actually important in many different aspects of life set a schedule and stick to it I am queen for setting a schedule and not sticking to it. Like, my planner is catching dust over there in the corner. Okay, so, but I try to remember everything I need to do, though. But I'm telling you guys, setting a schedule and sticking to it is going to be your best friend. You see how, like, when the homegirl calls and she be like, oh, hey, homegirl, like, yeah, we going outside. We going to see these niggies. Like, we going to be outside. That's your cue to be like, no. Y'all need to start telling your friends no. Y'all got to set strong boundaries with y'all friends when it comes to taking this transition into your life because it's going to be so easy to get sidetracked you have to be consistent and take your schedule as serious as you take your school schedule or your work schedule if you're at work you're not just gonna leave work and just do anything right so you got to treat your 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 nine to five and your personal business with the same type of respect just because you can't fire yourself doesn't mean you should have fired yourself I like to call that blackout like there's times in my schedule where I completely black out and I know that in order for me to pour 100% into my business I have to block out this time frame which means I'm not doing anything unrelated to my business during this time frame that's no hanging out with friends no partying no scrolling on the Instagram on the TikTok jipping and jiving trooper the hollering smoking chilling all that goes out the window it's blackout time that's straight for work that's why it's important that you learn how to maximize your time. Me, I maximize my time by working in between things that I have to do. I take the train and the bus to work. So while I'm on a train and the bus, I'm working on my business, whether that's Googling something, that's finishing a form, that's researching, that's um, um, data logging, like whatever I'm doing, I can, a little bit goes a long way. I can take a 30 minute train ride and get 30 minutes of work done. Now I'm 30 minutes ahead of my goal. You get what I'm saying? So I may not be 100 minutes ahead or a year ahead, but I'm 30 minutes ahead, I'm getting there. And if I go to work five days a week, so 30 minutes a day, five days a week, that's gonna give you a little bit over two hours to get a lot of stuff done. Like I said, things add up. Even when I'm reading my books, like I was reading Rich Dad Poor Dad and there's 28 chapters to that book. And it literally took me like 
about a month because I was taking a chapter a day. So a little goes a long way. Even though I'm telling you guys to work in between time and set aside your spare time now to make your business hours, it's not meaning that like you're not supposed to give yourself a day off. Please make sure to give yourself a day off. Burnout is very real and you don't want to be burnt out because once you're burnt out, you're not going to want to do anything. You're not gonna you're gonna be a walking corpse and you don't want that because you cannot do anything on empty like you can't do anything on empty gas. You can't do anything on flat tires. So make sure that even though you're multitasking and you're maximizing your time, that you're also giving yourself a self-care day. Usually Sundays are my self-care day where I don't do too much. Like I may still work on some stuff on my computer or my iPad, but I'm not gonna be sewing. I'm not going to be recording videos i'm not going to be doing vigorous work i'm going to give my body and my mind and my spirit some time to rest so that i can start fresh on monday again what works well for me is creating a weekly plan or a routine like where i know on this day i'm going to dedicate it to cleaning my room on this day i'm going to dedicate it to editing videos on this day i'm going to edit dedicate it to my business plan you know creating a routine where it's like okay i know these days are dedicated and they have a home they have a place to exist and as long as i visit those days and visit those things that i have to do they will be accomplished okay just like when you're cleaning everything has a home as long as you place the things into their home things will be clean so it's kind of just getting an organization type of like schedule together and a lot of people don't like to use planners i like planners because i get to buy pink ones and it makes me want to use it i get pink pens pink planners but another alternative is using your notes or your reminders or your planners on your phone on google sheets like if that works better for you because writing is not everyone's forte but a lot of times a balance between both really works well for me so a lot of times i take notes in my planner physically and then i take some notes in my on my ipad and i kind of just like mesh them together but please remember you guys not to be overly ambitious when you're planning your to-do list. I know that when we're creating and we're going into this entrepreneurship lane that we want to do so many things because our minds are racing a mile a minute. I want to do this, I want to accomplish this, I need to do this, but we are not superheroes, you guys. Be realistic because if you don't set realistic expectations for yourself, that's how you're going to crumble, okay? So if you know that you're going to work and you really like don't have enough time to factor in something for the business that day because maybe you're working overtime or something, save it for tomorrow. Because if you set aside that time that doesn't exist to do this work, you're going to disappoint yourself over something that wasn't physically possible or mentally sometimes possible. The key is to be patient with yourself because you're on a journey. You don't know where you're gonna end. Like everyone always wants to race to the end goal, but where do you really ever end up going? Once you accomplish one goal, in my experience and in many people's experiences, you end up wanting to accomplish another goal and then another goal and then another goal. Like the goalpost continues to move in your own head because of the things that you start to desire as soon as you get to the next level. So the whole thing is enjoying the journey because you never know when you're going to finish your journey or how it's going to finish. But if you enjoy the process, that's where the real the real success story is at. That's where it really is. Remember, it is not a race. It is a marathon, you guys. It is not a race. You're always competing with the person you were yesterday. So um, you don't really need to race yourself, right? Because it's not physically possible. So always remember that you're in a marathon, you guys. You're just trying to get to the next level from where you once were. And you, no one else matters. Nothing around you matters. You're not going at the speed of time with no one else. It's your time frame. So be patient with yourself. Also remember that quality is very important. So if you're speeding and rushing through a lot of things, you might mess up the integrity and the quality of whatever it is that you're producing. If I'm making a swimsuit and I know I'm so tired, I can barely keep my eyes open, but because I want to be productive and I want to set aside this time for my business, I'm sewing at 3 a.m. knowing I have to be up at 7 for my 7 a.m. for my 9 to 5. I'm going to do some jacked up stitches. Like my bathing suit probably would not come out the best quality quality because I've been like rushing through it and like not taking my time. So always remember that time is 
never on your side so stop trying to beat it <laughs> just let time go and whatever you accomplish in that time frame it was meant to be and just continue being consistent with that another thing to remember is to not go through the journey alone you guys um sometimes i like to think that i'm the only struggling entrepreneur outside of college not knowing what i want to do where i want to go and how i want to do things but knowing i want to build a business i'd be thinking that i'm alone but honestly i'm not there are so many people around you walking the same journey um whether you find them in person or online or you know in your small friend group find someone you can do business dates with or content dates with um someone that you can talk to about the struggles and help each other find like shortcuts and information and tricks and you know two minds are always better than one and i'm not saying to share your business journey or share your business secrets with anybody else but it's always nice to have someone to run through that journey with so that you don't kind of get stuck being in your head all the time about all these things that you want to do and you can find kind of find a friend to like be a part of this journey with you i know when i share this journey with other content creators it inspires me to have ideas and like i just like get more exposed to like different things that's happening around me in the world that i probably wouldn't be exposed to if i was just in my own bubble just uh, nine to five business nine to five business don't have no life don't have no like you don't want to be that because you're going to drive yourself insane so if it's possible make sure you find someone that can walk this road with you and don't forget to reward yourself you guys reward yourself if you are hard at work and you're working hard here, you're working hard there, it's always nice to have a pat on the back. Like, and you're not gonna get that, especially when you're owning your own business. No one's gonna go as hard as you for you than you are. So rewarding yourself is nice. I love to reward myself. Whenever I know that I get a lot of work done and I do the things that I've always wanted to do, I make sure this is done, and I'm like, oh, I actually accomplished this goal, I go out and buy me something. Sometimes I go out and buy ice cream or a donut or a piece of jewelry or it doesn't have to be expensive it could be literally anything like oh let me get myself some makeup today like i worked mad hard this week reward yourself because you deserve it you have to be your source of encouragement and sometimes that that comes in pampering yourself it comes in gifts and you don't only have to reward yourself with gifts reward yourself for free time reward yourself with days off reward yourself but make sure that you always remember that you're human and you're not a robot so you don't have to operate as one just make sure that you're pouring into yourself in a healthy way okay and the last thing i wanted to go over you guys with balancing your nine to five and being a business owner your side hustle but we're trying to turn the side hustle into a business so we're gonna say business owner i don't want to hear y'all say side hustle anymore okay this ain't no side hustle okay the nine to five is the side hustle okay this is the bees knees okay the bees not yees okay be confident in yourself you guys be courageous be brave and be confident because you're not going to be able to get through this journey with fears and doubt you're going to have to bet on yourself each and every time even when you lose even when you make mistakes you're going to have to continue betting on yourself until you win you need to use your failures to thrive remember you remember that 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 saying remember the alamo and how it's like this huge chant well, the Alamos lost very badly, you guys, and they use that failure to guide their victories. They use that to win again. You get what I'm saying? Use your mistakes and your failures to propel you to the next level, you guys, because no one wants to feel defeated. No one ever wants to be defeated. No one ever wants to lose. But you guys, name one investor who's never lost money. Name one. You're gonna lose okay that's how life is you're gonna lose and with losing come lessons and those lessons is what's gonna help you take different steps in the next time you do something so that you don't lose again and even if you lose then you're gonna take lessons from that too you're gonna take so many lessons that by the time you win it's going to be all the wisdom that you gather from those mistakes that's gonna create that win for you so keep going consistency and balance is key and never forget, 
discipline and determination those four things are going to take you exactly on the right track that you need to be on your entrepreneur journey if you have any tips for your fellow entrepreneurs drop it down in the comments below also if you are a business owner whether your business is small growing or you are looking to grow your business drop it down in the comments below i will check out all the businesses listed and i hope you guys check out and support each other's businesses i will go on your pages and i will show love and i'll even promote some of you guys i just want to say as long as you pour into yourself you'll be able to do anything that you desire and we're on this journey together i am trying to make my small business go from a small e-commerce fashion business to a big design fashion house like hoka chanel i really want to you guys and i'm gonna do this journey with you guys and i'm gonna stop saying you guys and i'm gonna say if you're not going to do anything else you guys you know how i like to end off my video make sure you pour into yourself and i'm going to see you in the next one and i love this series it girl business tips 101 if you guys love this new series let me know down in the comments below and i cannot wait to share the loads of business tips i have all in here i wrote all it down for you guys I said I wrote all it down. I wrote it all down for you guys, but yeah, y'all don't have to go to no nerdy person about business tips. Y'all can come to Day Harris NYC, the fashion channel, and get a little bit of everything. So I'll see you soon, and thank you for tuning in. Love y'all. Bye. <laughs>